Now I've showed you my house, I've showed you my car, I've even showed you my own net worth. Today I'll be sharing with you my insurance portfolio. You know, I work as an advisor and a supposed expert on this subject, but because insurance is so dry, I haven't covered this too much on this channel. I've relied mostly on my website, The Astute Parent, to cover on insurance topics and analysis. But today I'll be sharing with you my own insurance portfolio so that hopefully you can take a thing or two away from this discussion and refine your own portfolio. So if you are interested in this topic, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Now let's start with this question found on Sydney that kind of inspired this video also. And this question reads, what should I ask my financial agent about the products they are selling? Now some of the good answers I'd like to highlight with you together is this first one over here. Ask him whether he and his wife invested into his product. Now that question has certain logic, but also if you ask any banker whether equity link notes are good, whether dual currency plans are good or not, very often they'll tell you that they've bought into it themselves. And I'd like to quickly say that those plans are complex, not likely a very good idea. So this may not also be very helpful uh, in totality. So some other good answers, this one reads, you should understand how the product works and how it may address your need. Listen to what is said first instead of dismissing it, but do know when you are hearing misinformation. As the saying goes, trust, but verify. I think that's very logical. And this over here is if you are looking to find out about the agent's character, you can ask what products does the agent and his wife own, whether they are just representing their own company and see if the agent is honest and transparent. I think this is a gut feel thing. And last but not least, always ask them why they think the product is a good fit. Make sure that they are product fitting instead of product pushing. I think the last one resonates with me the most. Product fitting more than product pushing. Very quickly in a quick recommendation session, you kind of know the agenda already and always trust your gut feeling on things. So without further ado, now let's see what I have in my own insurance portfolio because if some of the answers over there suggest what the agent is buying, that maybe gives you some clues as to whether some plans are good or not. Let's look at my Excel sheet of insurance plans. And before we get there, let's not have this discussion of whether buy term investor difference is better or whole life is better because there's really no conclusion to it. It depends and it must fit what you are looking for. You know, an industry veteran in Singapore, he actually propagated that whole life is no good. Uh, that is accurate last time, but as of now, I don't think that logic is actually still valid. Why? Simply because whole life plans they've adapted, they are no longer now for growing wealth. They are back to focusing on protection. And right now, there are a lot of multiplier whole life plans. You look at Prudential, you look at Great Eastern, you look at Aviva, you look at AIA, they all have multiplier whole life plans. Now, if you're keen to find out more, check out this article that I've written before. I'll leave links below. And let's dive back to the Excel sheet. The first one on top you see over there, which I'll highlight for you now, is actually an Aviva decreasing term plan. That was purchased at my age of 28. Now this is actually not my earliest plan. I actually have a whole life plan that's passed to me from my parents. But the old whole life plans are not so good. They are premium payment for a lifetime, which does not make sense. We want to complete payments at some point, don't have too much liabilities. And that's why I gave that up to replace it and to refresh the portfolio with uh, different coverage. Then I also bought a term plan before this that was not too competitive. So rates actually have improved over the last uh, couple of years. This decreasing term plan, what does it mean? It means that it decreases in coverage along the years. 500,000 at the start and it decreases. Typically, a decreasing term plan is to fit a mortgage liability because mortgage, you pay off the, the amount, correct? And it decreases. So it's used to fit it. You know, back when I was 10 years younger, I used to think, okay, my net worth increases and then I do not need so much insurance coverage. A decreasing term plan is the best fit. So that's why I pursued that. But actually, point of view has actually changed. 10 years later, as a more mature self now, I think that approach is not what I'm looking for already. So I may give up this plan some point in future, especially when the coverage becomes very little for the same premium. So it's always thinking differently, it's not really bias remorse. But the main thing is this plan I'm still keeping because there's no exclusion. I actually got whacked on the eye during a badminton game, so I had an eye injury. So subsequent plans, a lot of them actually had exclusions to it. So if you have a pre-existing condition, be very 
careful about replacing plans. Always check whether you can get the same terms and conditions or not. So let's go back to the Excel sheet itself. You realize that next in place when I was age 30, there's actually this plan by Tokyo Marine. And that was the first time I bought early critical illness. Now early critical illness, in my opinion, is meant to cover a year's annual income. Because early critical illness, in my opinion again, a lot of times the condition is not severe. You are able to resume back work as per normal after a couple of years. So early critical illness is not career threatening. Uh, I do believe that uh, do not purchase too much of it. It's quite expensive, but purchase some just in case you want to take a year's leave from work to recover. You have that opportunity cost covered. So that was my first step into early critical illness. Before that, there were early critical illness plans, but they were not too good, so I didn't actually purchase. I changed my point of view after the new generations of early critical illness were a lot better. Also in that year, I actually purchased something from NTUC Vivo Life. And just a quick story, this plan, they had a launch promotion, if I don't remember wrongly. So it's actually good to be in the industry. You get deals. Uh, I'm sure property agents, they have deals from launch, from developers also. So no secret. Uh, it comes with it comes with the job. So then after that, you see that I have something from Sing Life. Now this is actually pretty interesting because this term plan I managed to get it covered with no exclusion to my eye condition, which means I could drop the previous plan itself. So it's pretty good. I I use this new plan much more competitive in premiums, even though I was slightly older, and then I could replace it uh, very holistically. Then next on the list, I have something called a personal accident plan. Now, uh, just a shout out to this plan, which I'll leave links below. This plan right now, it covers kids with a certain sublimit. So this sublimit comes from the parents limit itself. I believe uh, that this is one of the most effective ways to cover personal accident for family wise, because kids, they play, they climb, they pull things, they play with sharp things. Endless, the list is endless. Kids get hurt. They go to a &E so often. If you're a parent, you kind of know it. So I do advocate personal accident plans to cover for kids, especially if your corporate doesn't have any cover. So some corporates are very generous, but if you work with an S SME, uh, they may not cover. If you work like me, self-employed, uh, you should look to use a personal accident to cover. And this plan over here is currently, as of now, uh, one of the most competitive. Then next, I have stepped up my critical illness cover and early critical illness cover with this plan also from Sing Life. So this plan will last me to age of 66, as you can see, the strategy to adopt is you stagger coverage duration, right? Because your earning capacity decreases theoretically over time, which means if your term plans expire, then so be it. And I use the whole life plan, which if you have seen the Excel sheet, to cover permanently, just in case there are new liabilities or new changes that we can't predict down the years, or we live to a much longer age that we can't predict right now. So term plans, they always need you to define the duration. And as of now, I much prefer or I advocate to have that duration staggered and it draws down as you become older. In any case, your dependents are grown up already. The kids don't need your source of income. Your liabilities, your mortgage over here should be fully paid. So you don't need that much coverage, especially in your 60s, 70s. Then last but not least, SAF term plan. I only have 100,000 ready to put my foot into the door. Because at that point of time, if not, I interpreted the words as you need to purchase uh, before you MR. But if I'm not wrong, double check with Aviva, of course. Now you still can purchase, but always double check with them. At that point of time, my interpretation was like that. That's why I put my foot in. I got a small plan. And as always, the group term plan currently, it's competitive until 65. Do note that the premium steps up significantly from 66 to 70. Then you also realize I only add in the critical illness, a very small component of it. It's not very competitive in my opinion. Uh, early critical illness, very short in terms of the list. That's again in my opinion. So uh, these plans, they go by age band, which means as you become older, it becomes expensive. When you're young, it's cheap. But a personal plans rate is level throughout that duration. So hopefully that gives you some insights. I'll next round up with what I bought for my kids. Over here, you see that I have bought whole life plans for my kids because kids, the rates are so cheap. These are for my two boys. And you realize that, or, or rather I realized that I haven't did what I was supposed to do. I actually bought a small whole life plan before my kid was born. I wanted to add on a second one, uh, space out the premiums and stuff, uh, but too busy. At the end of the day, not done. So 
I focus on my clients' kids and my own kids' things. Uh, let's let's get it up to speed also. So hopefully you found a thing or two useful that you can incorporate onto your own interest planning or ask your own advisor the right questions. So just to round up the few key parts, let me put it out for you to see over here. The first, I believe whole life plans for kids is cheap. Limit the whole life premium as short as you can, 10 years if you can afford it, and then you can pass to a kid fully paid. Fantastic idea. I still believe it works. Second, term plans. Term plans, you can choose to stagger them. As you become older, some of them complete their, their duration. That is fine. Third, early critical illness don't have too much of it because ultimately it's supposed to cover, in my opinion, one year of annual income. Then if your income steps up, then yes, buy more plans. And last but not least, critical illness, have sufficient of it because that's where your long-term income is impacted. So I have actually a previous video I've done on critical illness. My realization on what it really means now being a bit more mature. So if you haven't seen this presentation on critical illness, inviting you there, that's a hard to hard sharing that I have on this concept of critical illness that I believe will benefit yourself, your spouse, your family, if you plan it adequately. So I'll sign off from here and see you there. Take care and goodbye.